With every update coming over to the Blender Sculpting Tools, we continue to get amazing tools that we can use for our daily sculpt. And today we have a brand new tool that has to do with cloth sculpting. And of course, it does come with a couple of exciting features. And today we're going to take a look at this tool and share a couple of tips and things that you need to know before you get playing with it. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new tool that has just been made available in Blender 2.83. Now Blender 2.83 is still in its alpha and Pablo has been teasing this tool for a while now on Twitter and it's really really cool to see that there is actually several builds to this that do make sense and I think it's worth it for all of us to try it. Right now there is a link going to be in the description where you can check it out and at the same time, you would be able to get both the Mac version and the PC version so that you can try these things for yourself. One thing to note is that this tool is still under development, so bugs are also things that you should keep an eye open for. So we're just going to go through and, you know, take a look at several stuff. And we'll talk about things that works, things that don't work, and things that you should be careful about while working with this tool. So I'm going to start off by just putting a very simple plane, and I'm going to press S on my keyboard to scale this in a little bit more. And go over here and throw in a couple of you know uh, subdivision surfaces now because what we're looking at is a cloth simulation you know sculpting tool it makes sense to have a lot more polygons so that we can work with them now one of the things I would also like to explain to you guys I mean within the time we're talking about this is there are certain things that do not work like the way it's been said and we'll get to those things you know as the video proceeds so for you to get into this you need to be obviously within the sculpting section now within the sculpting section Meanwhile, before we start doing that, let's just take a look at this. I still feel that this is not dense enough. So I'm just going to go in and throw in some more. I think maybe one more would be fine. All right. Something like this looks good. I'm just going to apply that and have this here. Okay. So one of the things that you would need to know is within the sculpting section, you can choose this tool directly here. So for now, it doesn't have any icon or you can, you know, just simply hold down shift and spacebar and you can scroll all the way down and select the word clot. Now, I would like to clearly, you know, state this, that this is a clot sculpting brush. It does not by any form simulate anything that has to do with collision, at least not now, because all attempts to actually get this to collide with stuff do not work. And I have not been able to actually see how you can constrain this to certain parts. Of course, we're just going to, you know, go through this thing so that you guys can see. But I just want to put some of these things out there so that you guys, you know, don't get misinformed about the whole thing. All right, so I'm going to jump directly back into a solid, you know, uh, form. And we're going to take a look at the brush and a couple of things that you need to know. Actually, I think, you know, staying in wireframe makes sense so that you guys can see everything that's going on. Right now, when you take a look at the brush, you're going to notice that we have two different stuff around us. The simulation limit and then, of course, there is a simulation fall off. Now, these things are basically parameters that you can use to actually play with this tool. And it just makes sense. It just makes sense that you can, you know, just come through and start moving things around. And you'll be getting some desirable results so right now i'll go ahead and switch this over here and once i start moving this you would notice that we're having the clothes folding all right so you can see we have this um you know we have this fold thing happening directly here and and it makes a lot of sense now there is some things that do not work regularly and one of those things that don't work regularly at least now is the symmetry so symmetry is broken but i think for the build which i have right now it kind of works a bit better than the previous build so previously symmetry was broken and it's something that you know you should also keep an eye for if you're making use of this tool so you can also choose to turn off symmetry directly from here and then you can you know go through and work with this thing like this other things that you need to know about this tool is this that directly here we have all of those settings that you would really want to work with and then in the new build that exists right now we have several deformations attached on that and we also have the force fall off now in the previous build there was no first fall off and this is really cool now you can choose to work with radial or plane so if you choose to work with radial right now you're definitely getting exactly the same you know the same results that we're having directly here so i'm just going to increase the brush size a little bit more 
I think that's a little bit too much. You can actually press F on your keyboard to do that. So I'm going to do this right now and you can see we have this radial feel that is going on around there. Let me undo that. If I switch this to plain right now, you would see we have a much more plain thing going on. Of course, this has to do with a bit of radial alongside because when you take a look at these sections and these sections, you get to see that. But this is more like the part that you need to focus more on. All right. So for this one right here, you can see the plane gets to play a different role and the radial also plays a different role altogether. So once you're looking at how you can create things like clots and all that stuff, I think having varieties of variations like this would really make a lot of sense. So if you want to get into these things, I think this makes sense. And there is also another tip which I think it's worth sharing. Of course, this doesn't really give you all of that, you know, um, freedom to do some certain things, but it gives you that freedom for sculpting, um folds and and you know sculpting certain details now on some certain points you might work with some of these brushes but not all of the brushes as far as i know as of now can do a lot of things so i think the major brushes that you might end up using so much is like the drag the grab probably the inflate and the pinch all right because right now the push doesn't really do a lot of stuff the push if you select the push you get something like this to me i think it's still a bug and hopefully uh, pablo is going to go through and fix this later and you know you get all of these huge gaps i i've tried severally to see maybe if the fault is from me or something but i don't know if you guys have an idea of how you can work with that particular you know deformation tool please put that in the comment section i would really like to know how that works at the same time we also have the other br brushes that are here right now i think like the grab brush is one of those brushes that makes sense for me the inflate brush also makes sense but i have not really uh, had a couple of use cases for it so let's just undo a couple of time and see because i know you can use that to create some sort of tick fold that just gives you this um feeling around here and of course it makes sense but i haven't really seen a lot of use cases for that one and then pablo also teased something that you can do with the pinch and the pinch uh, perpendicular so right now you can actually go in and do some of those pinching things here but then i think this is also relative to the strokes that you're working with so you can go down here and choose the kind of stroke that you can work with and the fact that this exists as a sculpting tool is just incredible because you know you can still choose to use your pen display and or your pen tab and just simply turn on pressure and with pressure turned on you can choose to work with these things you know effortlessly and it just makes sense so depending on what you're working on the fact that you have this thing directly here just you know it just makes a lot of sense so i also went ahead and tried out some other things as well and uh the example which i'm going to show you guys now is pretty it's one of the use cases i think a lot of you guys would work with owing to the fact that blender is a very awesome tool that you can use to do both simulation and you know you can dive from simulation over to sculpting at the same time so i figured out that maybe using this is going to be a very good stuff all right so we can take a look at you know a clot wrapping around the head of susan the monkey something like this and of course you can see one of the places that this is going to make sense and you know we can also notice that we don't really have the best collision right now probably because this is still in its alpha version and hopefully all of these things will be fixed before the final production version gets released so if you have something like this you can just simply apply that so they can have that uh you know committed to state and we can jump into the sculpting section one of the things which i felt initially i felt like maybe collision was something that could occur like on the fly i mean like it does have collision but it doesn't have that and this is one of those things which i you know i pretty wish that since it's set to be simulation it probably would have that feeling which brings me to the point where i say uh, once you're creating things like this or you're working with something like this if you have to simulate some things like if you have to simulate some drapings like this please go ahead and simulate these drapings and don't rely solely on the sculpting brush to do that okay and also at the same time if you're trying to get things to work for you you can also go ahead and you know use the brush for some very not so heavy task but for some very light tasks this does remind me 
so much of Cinema 4D. So in Cinema 4D, there is some sort of workaround within the sculpting tools where you can actually create some sort of drapings and stuff and also sculpt clothes effects directly onto those things. And at the same time, in ZBrush, you can also do exactly the same thing where you can, you know, load up a couple of brushes and use them to create things like that. I kind of feel that that is one of the things that's going on here directly with these tools that we have here. And you can use them to achieve what you want at the end of the day. And you would also notice that since cloth has different, you know, uh, thickness and stuff, that the brush would react to them differently. And that brings us to the cloth mask. So cloth mask actually matters a lot. Right now, it is set to the default of one, which simply means that the cloth has a weight of one. So the last number you attach to the cloth mask is relative to how, you know, the brush actually deals with the cloth. So for example, I have this directly here and it's set to one. If I come over here and put this at 0 0.2 and press the enter key, I would have something moving a bit more faster. Okay. So you can see that we can move this way faster than, you know, what we could do before. And this is, this is quite interesting. Other tips which I think I would like to share with you guys is, is this. Now, once you're working with a brush like this, or once you're working with something like this, don't go like all happy mode with this tool initially. Just like you work with every other tool or every other creative tool, try as much as possible to work with something that has about this amount of detail, all right? So you could see the amount of detail that we have directly here. So you can work with something that has this amount of detail and then you can go in and subdivide this some more. Don't subdivide, you know, extensively to a point where your mesh begins to drag. Like right now, if you see what we have, we have a mesh that looks like this, fairly decent. And, you know, we can get some, you know, we can get some things working out for this. If you want to get a much more cleaner looking geometry out of this, what you can do is come over to the modifier, go through and just simply add a subdivision. Like right now, you can see we have something fairly decent that we can work with. And by just increasing this by two, you can see how much, you know, you can work with this in places like this where you have issues. If you had already baked this, you might end up having a lot of issues trying to fix this, but then you can actually go back this way, hold down shift and clear that out. And you can go up one level a bit more and you can see you have those things resolved. So these are things that I feel that you guys need to know about this. And at the same time, I'm very excited about this tool. Reminds me of Mosh 3D and, you know, the amazing things that you can do with Mosh 3D. And just in case you haven't seen that software, there's going to be a link in the description where you can see how that works. And at the same time, it sort of reminds me of, you know, the kind of things that you can do especially when you're working with zbrush and we've also seen marvelous designer come up with sculpting tools that you can use to sculpt clothes and that is really really interesting and so in case you're thinking about this and at the same time you're thinking about marvelous designer and you're saying what if i can sculpt clothes like in high density and get them in low resolution and bring them over here and do some sculpting things on them we did cover a video about that and i'm also going to put the link in the description so that you can go through and check that out and yeah that's going to be about it link to where you can get this for both the mac and the pc version is going to be in the description so you too can you know pick up this tool and play with it of course this is still in its beta so expect a lot of bugs i did get a couple of them while working with this and like i said earlier there is just a couple of things that do fall apart sometimes and one of the other things that made a lot of sense for me while pablo was you know playing with this was the fact that he went over and you know he, he could simply go through and create some sort of mask and you know play with the mask and get some very interesting results but i did play with the mask with the build which i have right now but that didn't seem to work i had to restart blender over and over before i could get that to work and for some cases that still doesn't really work that much but right now i don't know if the problem is from the build or if it's just a simple bug that's just you know flying around but then of course this is an incredible tool makes a lot of sense i urge you to go through check these things out and tell me what you guys think about it in the comment section i am very happy about this it's really cool to see that these things are coming over to blender and we've also covered a couple of videos about Blender and some of the things that are coming over to 2.83 and also 2.82. So you could also go over to the link in the description to check those videos out. And that's going to be about it, guys. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video, you learned something from it, you can go ahead and give it a like. And don't forget to turn on notification. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.